Good morning to all of our shareholders and guests and welcome to the 2021 Annual General Meeting of AI Media Technologies Limited. My name is Deanne Weir, Non-Executive Director and Chair of your company. The company secretary has informed me that a quorum is present, so I now declare our 2021 AGM open. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands from which I'm speaking today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and recognising their ongoing culture and connections to the lands, waters and community. I extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander Perth peoples joining us online today and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands from which all participants are joining us in this online meeting. I would now like to introduce the AI Media Board of Directors to you and outline how they and other participants will actually take uh, part in uh, today's meeting. So, first of all, a very warm welcome to Alison Lodge, non-executive uh, non director and chair of our remuneration and nomination committee. Alison is joining us all the way from Canada. So good morning, Alison. Mr. John Martin, non-executive director and chair of our audit and risk committee. Good morning, John. Tony Abrahams, AI Media's co-founder and CEO. John Bird, our Chief Financial Officer. And Sue Sinosian, our Company Secretary, who will be the moderator for the Q&A sessions today. Also present is the company's lead audit partner from Deloitte, Josh Tanchel. We also have representatives from our share registry provider, ComputerShare, and members of AI Media's executive team are also joining us online. So a very warm welcome to everybody. I'd now just like to outline a little bit about the technology and procedural matters for today's meeting. So today's meeting is being held online via the Lumi platform. Now this allows shareholders, proxies and guests to attend the meeting virtually. All attendees can watch a live webcast of the meeting. In addition, shareholders and proxies will be able to ask questions and submit votes. In case you have any difficulty viewing the presentation slides during the AGM, I can confirm that we did lodge those materials with the ASX platform earlier this morning. If you experience any difficulty at all in participating via the online platform, please contact the helpline shown on the screen. Now, for questions, attendees can submit questions at any time. To ask a question, select the messaging tab at the top of the online platform. Within that tab, there is a section for you to type your question. And once you've finished typing, please hit the arrow symbol to send. Now, please note that while you can submit questions from now on, I won't address them until the relevant time within the meeting. Please also note that your questions may be moderated, or if we receive multiple questions on the one topic, we may just amalgamate those together. For those shareholders who wish to ask a verbal question, an audio questions facility is available during this meeting. To use this service, please pause the broadcast on the online platform and then click on the link under asking audio questions. A new page will open and you will be prompted to enter your name and the topic of your question before being connected. You will listen to the meeting on this page while waiting to ask your question. Now, if you have any issues using this system, please return to the online platform. Finally, due to time constraints, we may not get to answer all of your questions. If that happens, we will answer them in due course, either via email or posting uh, the responses to our website. Now, in regard to voting, voting today will be conducted by way of a poll on all items of business. In order to provide you with enough time to vote, I will shortly open voting on all resolutions. At that time, if you are eligible to vote at this meeting, a new voting tab will appear. Selecting this tab will bring up a list of resolutions and present you with voting options. To cast your vote, simply select one of the options. There is no need to hit a submit or enter button as the vote is automatically recorded. The voting tab will soon appear. Please submit your votes at any time. And I will give you a warning before I move to close voting. An additional home icon can take you right back to the home landing page, which shows you the meeting information. So you can vote at any time during the meeting once the poll has been opened, and you can also change your vote at any time up until the poll is declared closed. That will occur just prior to the end of the meeting, and I will give you warning that the poll is going to be closed. 
I confirm that where undirected proxies have been given in favour of the chair, I will vote in favour of all resolutions to the extent permitted. During the meeting, after we discuss each resolution, we will display the presentation on the presentation slides the number of direct and proxy votes received on each resolution during, uh, prior to the meeting. Votes cast during the meeting will be counted by personnel from our share registry provider computer share, but that's after the meeting has closed. The results of the poll will be released as soon as available today on the ASX and will also be displayed in the investor section of our company's website under the annual general meeting section within the investor services tab. So I now declare open uh, all voting on all items of business. The voting icon should now appear on your screens if you are a shareholder who has registered to participate in the AGM via the online platform. We invite you to start submitting your votes from this point on. And again, I will give you a warning before the poll closes at the end of the meeting. Right, so before we actually move on to the business elements of the meeting, I'd like to take a few minutes to reflect upon some of the events that have shaped this year for AI Media. It has been an exciting and transformational 12 months for our company as we cement our position as the leading global provider of technology-driven live and recorded captioning, transcription and translation services. Since our beginnings in 2003, our primary goal has always been to make content accessible for all, particularly those with hearing loss. Our mission to deliver social inclusion for all is becoming increasingly relevant, with consideration of social impacts becoming much more important to investors and companies across the globe. What has also been particularly exciting about the last couple of years is that the use of live captioning and translation have become mainstream across the globe as the use of video moves beyond just entertainment and becomes an essential communications tool for business and education and often consumed on mobile devices. With that context, it gives me great pleasure to reflect on our achievements in FY21, a year that featured several pivotal milestones for the company. While the global pandemic created certain challenges, it's also highlighted the importance of video content and by extension, captioning and translation for an increasing range of uses and accelerated its adoption as a business tool. With the strength and breadth of our product suite and our extensive network of customers, we are well positioned to capitalise on industry tailwinds to continue driving growth and value for our shareholders as we deliver profit with purpose. Our ASX listing in September 2020 followed our successful $65.5 million initial public offering. The IPO was the culmination of several years of work because we had seen the opportunity to scale our business to meet growing demand for video as a core communications tool for business and education. Completing our IPO and ASX listing was an exciting step for the company and it will allow us to continue our rapid growth, particularly outside of Australia. It's also enabling AI media to deliver further innovation to our technology platform and provide a broadening range of products and services to our value customers. The captioning, transcription and translation industry is a highly fragmented one, experiencing rapid growth and technology-driven consolidation, which presents exciting opportunities in a US $20 billion plus market. The industry is consolidating rapidly as seen by our own acquisitions and other examples, such as the acquisition of closed captioning provider Vitac by US-based uh, live captioning and transcription technology company Verbit, the RWS uh, acquisition of FTSE listed SDL, and IUNO's purchase of BTI and SDI. AI Media is well positioned with a strong balance sheet and the required capabilities to eagerly compete in this rapid growth sector. We will take advantage of industry tailwinds and we will pursue sensible acquisition opportunities if and when they arise. Now, last year, we acquired US captioning companies, uh, alternative communication services, along with uh, captioning, transcription and translation providers, Caption IT and Caption Access. In April, we launched our Smart ASR product, a breakthrough innovation in automatic captioning. 
ASR or automatic speech recognition, this addresses, addresses a significant market gap targeting customers who want a more affordable captioning service, but for whom the standard out-of-the-box ASR services just do not provide sufficiently high accuracy and confidence. Smart ASR is our first high-quality live product that does not require real-time human curation, and its launch follows several years of in-house product development. By layering our proprietary technology on existing ASR engines, Smart ASR delivers a significant improvement over the performance of competing products in market. It combines the best of our automation technologies, the knowledge and skill of our expert captioning team, and the benefits of our 18 years of industry experience with our proprietary data set that delivers the first ASR solution that was deployed in the Australian broadcast market. Continuing on our growth trajectory, in May of this year, we acquired US-based technology company EEG Enterprises. Now, this transformational deal was very well supported by our shareholders who backed our $40 million capital raise to fund the acquisition, including my own contribution of $2 million. So as you can see, I am a believer. Now, this strategic uh, purchase of EEG provides us with a ready-made customer base of US broadcasters and a valuable engineering capability that has already allowed us to deliver strategic customer wins in the first quarter post-acquisition. With the addition of EEG's flagship Lexi product to our technology suite, we combined the best of Lexi with Smart ASR and we created Smart Lexi, uh, which was tested successfully on the most watched television event in history. NBC's broadcast of the Tokyo Olympics and Para Olympics. We now have three clear price tiers for captions, transcription, and translation. Lexi, which is fully automated, Smart Lexi, which is semi-automated, and our premium AI Live service. The acquisition of AEG as a profitable business at a time when the underlying AI media business had achieved first profits well, that has set the strong foundations for our future growth. Most of the EEG revenue is derived by a high margin software as a service and infrastructure as a service business models. These revenue streams are ongoing and repeatable, derived from customer subscriptions. Add to this our booming hardware sales and rentals, and we have a strong business model on which we will deliver future growth, especially in markets outside of the US. Our company has been at the forefront of the highest quality live captioning for nearly 20 years. We have more than 2,200 customers globally, including Disney, Fox Corporation, HBO, The Nine Network, Seven Network, Sky News Australia, Al Jazeera, and the World Economic Forum, just to name a few. In addition, our captioning services are offered under Australia's uh, National Disability Insurance Scheme, and we also work with universities and colleges across the globe to provide captioning for all students in multiple languages. During the September quarter, we won several strategic customer accounts and we added further global technology companies to our customer mix, providing clear proof points of what the strategic transformation of the company looks like and tangible examples of what our future will be. We also announced an on-market buyback for up to 2 million AIM shares over the next 12 months. The company will buy back shares whenever they are available at a meaningful discount to their, their intrinsic value and where there is surplus cash available up until November 2022. Through this, we aim to deliver further value to our shareholders. So yes, it has been a very busy year for AI Media and I'm you know, tremendously pleased with what we've been able to achieve. Tony and the entire AI Media team have done an incredible job and I thank them all for their passion, commitment and innovation. I'd also like to thank my uh, fellow non-executive board members, John and Alison, and acknowledge our former board member, Jonathan Pearce, who retired after our full year results, having played a major role in supporting us through the IPO and our delivery against IPO forecasts. With our continued growth, we're also seeking two new independent directors over the coming months. I also want to thank our customers, 
from our long-standing broadcast and education clients who've been with us for many years, through to the increasing number of new clients who signed on for our services in the past year. We hope to continue to deliver to meet and exceed your expectations over the years to come. We have set AI Media on solid foundations for the future, and I am delighted to be leading our board into this exciting period of growth. And I would now like to welcome uh, Tony Abrahams, AI Media's co-founder and CEO, uh, to provide a, an address as well. Tony, over to you. Thank you, Deanne. Uh, and I would like to join with our chair in welcoming each of you to our 2021 AGM, our first as AI Media Technologies Limited. This name change, 18 years since I co-founded AI Media, speaks to our scalable technology-driven future, significantly enhancing our ability to deliver on our unwavering mission of improving social inclusion by making the world's increasing amount of content accessible for all. Following the transformational year that was FY21, the first quarter of FY22 demonstrates in a powerful way the step change in our now vertically integrated business with improvements in scalability, better quality revenue, new tiers of service, the introduction of new SaaS products, and enhanced global growth prospects in a growing $20 billion industry. Our technology-led growth strategy has supercharged our social inclusion impact with a seven-fold increase in the number of minutes to 100 million minutes of content made accessible annually. Central to this transformation to be technology-led is the more than $50 million of technology and product investments made over the last 10 years at AI Media in our platform. And then we combined our platform with EEG's technology platform, which we acquired in May 2021 for $45 million. Today, AI Media proudly owns and operates the world's leading live captioning, transcription and translation distribution platform known as ICAP, forming the core of an ever-expanding global ecosystem, one that already dominates the US broadcast industry. Our ICAP ecosystem enables seamless delivery and failover of our three tiers of live service, automated, semi-automated and premium, being Lexi, Smart Lexi and AI Live respectively. FY21, was our first financial year as a listed company, and we beat our prospectus forecasts. Revenue of $49.2 million was $5.4 million ahead of forecast, with gross profit of $20.4 million being $2.3 million ahead of forecast. Our FY21 gross profit margin rose from 39% to 42%. Importantly, the core AI media business, excluding EEG, achieved profitability three months ahead of forecast in March of 2021, providing a great platform for growth into FY22. Q1 FY22 saw us launch a brand new product suite named SubSilo, designed as a feature set to allow our customers to get more benefit more quickly and more easily from their live streams in downstream applications. Think Hansard for parliaments and search for media companies. We are proud that whilst we continue to invest in unifying the AI media and EEG technology platforms, we were still able to deliver Q1 FY22 revenue growth of 35% on the PCP with significant increase in gross margin from 39% to over 50%. This increase is driven by greater sales of our new higher margin products and automation benefits gained through our traditional services business. Our flagship Lexi and Smart Lexi minutes grew by 75% year on year as we delivered 22.7 million minutes of captioning in the first quarter across the world. That is 50% more than we delivered in the entire year of FY21. Our balance sheet remains strong. 
with a cash balance of $15.5 million. And as we continue to be very optimistic about our future, we launched a share buyback for up to 2 million shares as part of our capital management program. AI Media's global sales pipeline is strong. Recent wins include the Microsoft Teams platform integration, successful smart Lexi delivery of NBC's Olympics and Paralympics broadcasts on Peacock, and the signing of contracts with TVSN Australia Shopping Network and the New South Wales Parliament, among others. Our three-year growth plan focuses squarely on extending the leadership of the ICAP Live ecosystem beyond US broadcast to take it truly global, while continuing to increase the quality of revenue with an ever higher share of SaaS and recurring revenue. This first full year of EEG being part of our group is necessarily a transitional year for our business, with our focus on success being higher margin revenue streams and the winning of multi-year contracts with new customers in existing and new territories. Our strong cash position and profitability means we are well positioned to invest in our global growth initiatives as we take advantage of global regulatory and ESG tailwinds driven significantly by the global adoption of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, now ratified by 163 countries. In a process similar to the global commitments to achieve net zero by 2050, arising from the Glasgow Climate Summit, around the world, countries with no prior history or experience of live captioning, including India, have passed laws recently for the introduction of the service to meet their, their obligations under this International Disability Treaty. With these emerging legislative frameworks firmly in place, AI media offers markets new to live captioning, a tried and trusted plug and play technology platform, all powered by ICAP, as proven in the United States. The ICAP network seamlessly inserts captions into any live broadcast stream and, once enabled, becomes an integral component in our customers' video distribution platforms. Our aim and our investment thesis is that by 2025, the ICAP standard is as ubiquitous around the world as it is today in the United States. As a company, we firmly believe that as we continue to execute and grow, not only will we deliver strong shareholder returns, but our social inclusion impact in 2025 will be orders of magnitude greater than it is even today. We are extending our scalable product suite and technology to meet the needs of an ever larger and more diverse customer base at higher margins. This will see us truly deliver our goal of profit with purpose, a mission that animates our entire team at AI Media. Thank you to my chair, Deanne Weir, and independent directors, John Martin and Alison Lote for your leadership and guidance. I would like to conclude by thanking our diverse team of over 200 employees right around the world, working across time zones and cultures to deliver this global mission of accessibility that unites us all. I'll now hand back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. So now we turn to the four items of business for this meeting. Uh, the items of business before the company AGM this morning are set out in the notice of meeting. The three resolutions to be voted on are all supported by your board. Let's move to the first item. The first item of business is to receive and consider the financial report and the reports of the directors and of the external auditor for the financial year ended 30 June 2021. There is no vote on this item. A copy of these statements and the reports uh, was published in the 2021 annual report and was sent to those shareholders who requested copies. Shareholders have also had the opportunity to view the statements and reports on the company's website. 
The purpose of this item is to provide an opportunity for shareholders to ask questions and make comments about the company's performance, operations and management. All questions to the auditor should, in the first instance, be addressed to me as chair, and if appropriate, I will ask uh, Deloitte partner Josh Tanchel or our Chief Financial Officer John Burt to address the meeting. For those who may want to say something on remuneration, please bear in mind that we have a separate item of business in, uh, on the remuneration report. So I now invite comments or questions on the financial statements and reports. Uh, shareholders who have not already done so should enter their text questions online as shown on the screen now. Now, uh, firstly, uh, I'll deal with any written questions that have been submitted online during the meeting, after which I'll move to any audio questions. So, Sue, do we have any questions? Thank you, Deanne. At this time, there are no questions. All right. Well, if there are no questions, um, I will uh, then move on and confirm that the financial report um, and the report of the directors, uh, to the report of the directors and of the external auditor for the year 30 June 2021 are now received. Before we move to the items of business that are subject to a shareholder vote, please let me, me remind you that we will conduct a poll for each resolution. Uh, once the polls have been closed and the votes compiled, a report on the final results will be announced to the ASX and will be made available on the company's website. I have received a report of the results uh, of the direct and proxy voting instructions received for each item of business, and I have accepted the recommended results. The direct votes and proxy votes that we've already received will be displayed on the screen as we deal with each resolution. So let us move to then resolution one, which relates to the adoption of the remuneration report uh, for the financial year in 30 June 2021. Now, as set out in the notice of meeting, the vote on this resolution is advisory only. However, the board will take into account the discussion on this resolution and the outcome of the vote when considering the future remuneration arrangements uh, of the company. The remuneration report is set out within the company's 2021 annual report and provides uh, disclosures relating to director and executive remuneration. So I now invite questions on the remuneration report. Shareholders who haven't already done so should enter their questions onto the online platform as, again, now shown on the screen. And again, let's deal with any written questions first and then move to any audio questions. So, Sue, do we have any questions? Thank you, Deanne. At this time, there are no questions. All right. Well, then, in the absence of any questions, um, we will move to the preliminary voting results. Um, the direct votes and proxies received for this resolution are now shown on the presentation slide on your screen. I would like to remind shareholders who have not yet cast their votes on this resolution to do so now. Voting on this and all other items uh, is open. All right, so then let us move to the next item of business. Now, as the next item of business uh, relates to resolution two, which is the re-election of Deanne Muir as a director, uh, I will stand aside and hand the meeting over to my colleague, John Martin. Thank you, Deanne. Um, the next item of business is the re-election of Deanne Weir as a director. Um, for the company to meet the requirements of the ASX listing rules and the company's constitution, one director is retiring at this meeting by rotation and is offering herself for re-election. The next resolution is in respect of Deanne. Um, Deanne is retiring from the board under the company's constitution and being eligible offers herself for re-election. The board, other than Deanne, who abstains from making recommendations in the interest of good corporate governance, recommends that you vote in favour of Deanne Weir's re-election to the board. You will have seen a short bio of Deanne in the notice of meeting, and I hope you've had a chance to read it. Um, I would like to say something before we go any further, which is that it's been my pleasure to have served on the board under Deanne's leadership since 2013. In particular, 
Deanne has guided the board through a transformational period for the business over the last 18 months, with the added complexity of dealing with the challenges of COVID, the COVID pandemic during an IPO listing. I think we were one of the first companies to do an IPO on the ASX during COVID. Um, I now invite questions on resolution two, which is Deanne's re-election. Shareholders who have not already done so should enter their questions online as shown on the screen now. Um, I will firstly deal with any questions received in advance of the meeting. So written questions have been submitted online during the meeting after, after which I'll move to audio questions. Um, Sue, Sanostian, do we have any questions? Thank you, John. At this time, there are no questions. Okay, thanks very much. All right, well, that then um, will conclude the resolution discussion of resolution two, um, and I will uh, hand back to the chair. Thank you, John, um, very much. I appreciate that. Um, look, the direct votes and proxies received for this resolution are now shown on the presentation slide on the screen. Um, and after we close the polls today, votes cast today will be added to those and the final result launched with the ASX later this afternoon. So I would like to remind shareholders who have not yet cast their votes on resolution number two to do so now as voting remains open. All right, so with that, uh, we will move to resolution three. Uh, the company is seeking shareholder approval by way of a special resolution to have the ability to issue equity securities under the 10% placement facility to provide the company with additional flexibility to issue equity securities in appropriate circumstances. The board recommends that you vote in favour of this resolution. I now invite questions on resolution three. Shareholders who have not already done so should please enter any questions to the online platform as shown now on the screen. And again, we'll deal with written questions and then any audio questions. Sue, so, do we have any questions in relation to Resolution 3? Thank you, Deanne. At this time, there are no questions. All right. Well, we have clearly had a very clearly explained uh, notice of meeting. So, well done to the team on that. Um, this then, uh, so sorry, we now have the direct votes and proxies that were received for this resolution um, shown on the screen um, on the presentation slide. Uh, now, please note the polls are about to close on all items of business. So I would like to remind shareholders who have not vote yet cast their votes on uh, all resolutions, please do so now. I will um, pause for a few moments to allow anyone to submit their final votes, after which I will declare voting closed as um, resolution three was the final resolution in the items of business for today's meeting. So we'll just take a very brief pause for any final votes to come in. Okay, this now completes all items of business for the 2021 AGM. And as such, I now declare the polls closed. As noted earlier, the final results of the polls will be provided to the ASX today and will be placed on the company's website. A full transcript along with a webcast of the meeting will also be available on the website. We want to thank you so much for joining us today online for AI Media's uh, 2021 AGM. Uh, thank you to uh, all of our uh, supporters from ComputerShare to Deloitte to our friends at Lumi. Um, and thank you to the wonderful AI Media team uh, for all of their support. Um, thank you to Nick Golding, our wonderful lawyer. And uh, thank you very, very much to you, our shareholders. Your support is deeply appreciated. We couldn't be more excited about uh, the years ahead. And uh, we are honoured that you're coming on this, this journey with us. So thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day.